five minute murder. We picked out old Jerry Brudos this week. So there you go. Sorry, I had to uh, redo the video because my camera was falling down. So I got about halfway through and then needed to redo it. So yeah, Jerry Brudos, let me read you this again, the back of it. Uh, was born on January 31st, 1939. Uh, died on March 28th, 2006. He was an American serial killer and necrophile who committed the murders of at least four women by bludgeoning and strangling. Brudos would dress up in high heels and masturbate after committing a murder. While incarcerated, Brudos had piles of women's shoe catalogs in his cell. He wrote to major companies asking for them and claimed they were his substitute for pornography. Brudos died in prison on March 28, 2006 from liver cancer. At the time of his death, he was the longest incarcerated inmate in Oregon, Department of Corrections, a total of 37 years from 1969 to 2006. So Jerry Brudos is an interesting killer. Again, he was married, had children, and, uh, you know, he had his whole workshop set up in his garage and he had devised a system where there was like a doorbell where his wife would have to ring him because he would lock the door in the garage so that nobody could come in and he set up like an intercom system from what i understand where he could talk to her if she needed anything in the other room while he was working on his projects uh whatever those were right he was often dressing up in uh, women's shoes and spending lots and lots of time in there so apparently for Jerry it started when he was really really young right when he was just you know uh, I think six or seven years old he found a pair of his mom's shoes and uh, just loved them he put them on he would wear them around uh, and one day his mom caught him and so inadvertently she ends up punishing him pretty severely uh, for wearing her shoes. And it seems to cement in him that sexual need, right? That um, this idea that it's forbidden and that's sexual to him. So later on, he goes to school and, you know, his mom had a really bad reaction. And then he sees his teacher. And he's watching her feet underneath the desk and he can see that she's got high heels on and he is uh, very, very interested. And she happens to notice that he's interested in that. Uh, I believe at some point he actually steals one of her shoes and uh, has it and she finds it. Uh, she confronts him and instead of punishing him for it, she wants to understand why. She wants to know why he feels that way and so he gets this completely opposite idea of how people interact with that he has one woman his mother who is really upset and angry that he's doing that and feels like he's got a problem and he has another woman who doesn't shun him for it right and is interested in understanding why and I think that that probably does something in Jerry's mind because for the rest of his life, he is turned on by high heels. Now, of course, that, you know, there's plenty of people that have foot fetishes out there and, and love shoes and high heels and leather and uh, no kink shaming uh, because there are lots of those things that I like, right? So, you know, everybody has their thing. It changes when you decide to start killing people because of that. And Jerry, of course, you know, we don't know exactly why he decided to start killing. We don't know uh, what was going on that created that. But eventually what ends up happening, these women, uh, later on, he'll say that, you know, that they just happened to stop by the house. One of the women, uh, her car broke down and she was looking for help. And so he was helping her. Right. And he comes up with all of these elaborate ideas of how he got them into his garage, trying to take photos of them for a photo shoot. Right. And he would have 
hundreds of pictures in his garage of these different women that he had taken pictures of and taken lots of pictures of their shoes and their feet and dressed them up in lingerie. And so he would do that, but then he starts taking it a, a step further, right? Because he starts killing them. Uh, and he kills at least four, possibly more than that. Uh, but all of these women, he said, just happened to show up there and he let them go. He had nothing to do with it, but they found a severed foot and a shoe in his freezer, right? He had uh, uh, dismembered one of the women's breasts and was trying to keep it and trying to figure out how he could, you know, preserve it, right? He ends up throwing that away at some point. So he's got all of these crazy ideas and he's got a wife right there with him, right? He's doing it in the same house. She lives there too. So something almost akin to, you know, of course with Gacy, uh, he gets divorced, the wife moves out. But for some of that time, he's still out stalking and bringing young men over to the house while the wife is there. Uh, before that, his mother was there. She would go away on trips, but she was still there in the household. So it's amazing to me uh, that with a lot of these killers, the desires are so strong that they look for ways that they can mask it, and they do it anyway right? Because their compulsions, they just can't control. And they need to do these things. And Jerry Brudos would do that. Uh, so there were some of the murders that were committed in his car, uh, or in his basement, or in his garage. Um, he had two different houses that he resided in during the periods that he committed the murders. Uh, but each of the victims was strangled. Um, they were photographed before and after their death. So we had photographs there of them alive and then photographs of them not alive, which is interesting because he denied all of it, but all the evidence was right there. So you want to talk about somebody who is uh, very narcissistic, right? Uh, and can come up with these stories knowing that he's caught and still try to push that narrative, knowing that he had pictures of the victims dead in his house like not just that the he had pictures of them but pictures of them in his house dead <laughs> so uh just crazy crazy jerry brudos uh really really had a thing for shoes and uh you know who doesn't like a good high heel just saying uh i definitely don't have uh hundreds of uh, uh shoe catalogs anywhere though uh, but it always reminds me of Al Bundy, right? Uh, and working in the shoe store. Uh, maybe it'd been a good job for Jerry. Maybe he would have uh, really enjoyed that job. Probably would have given him a, a wider pool to pick from. But there you go. Jerry Brudos dies of, uh, of liver cancer and uh, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. If you haven't seen, uh, if you haven't seen it, and I don't know who's watching me that hasn't watched Mindhunter, uh, but on, I want to say it's, I think it's season one of Mindhunter uh, that Jerry Brudos is in. And uh, the guy who plays him does a great job. He's very narcissistic. Uh, but I think it's interesting. They have the one scene where they bring him a pair of shoes. And he, like, pretends at first that he's not interested. And then he walks off to the side and, like, pulls out the shoes and... Uh, you know, wax it right in front of them. So, you know, obviously it was a very sexual thing for him uh, and for a lot of people out there. Uh, you know, it just is what it is. Uh, like I said, no kink shaming at all. Uh, just don't kill people, right? Don't harm them and then kill them for the things that you desire. Uh, there are plenty of people out there that are more than willing uh, to engage in that kind of behavior without having to kill them, right? Uh, one of the things, you know, OnlyFans, there are plenty of people out there making millions off of their feet pics, right? Uh, Jerry Brudos, if he lived in this day and age, uh, may have found some relief, right? He may not have been going and killing women and dismembering them if all he had to do was go on OnlyFans and look at it, right? So it and that really poses an interesting question. 
You know, as society has changed, as our technology has changed, how much do these new avenues that we have curb some of that, uh, that sexual killing behavior? Right. If you have access to those things and are not so taboo, uh, does that curb that behavior? You know, some people will say no. Some people will say yes. Uh, but it's an interesting thing. You know, obviously, murders still happen, so it hasn't stopped them. Uh, but it would be interesting to know the statistics there. Right. I don't know. Uh, you guys comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, do you think that OnlyFans has uh, some kind of help for people that have serious issues where they can find what they're looking for and not have to go? Or does it encourage them to take it a step further? Does it push them forward into going and doing more and more and worse and worse? Is that true too? I don't know. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, but there you go. Jerry Brudos. I will be up in Milwaukee this weekend for the Midwest Gaming Classic. Uh, matter of fact, by the time, well, I'll be working when you guys watch this. But uh, tomorrow, uh, today is Thursday. Tomorrow on Friday, I'll be driving up to Milwaukee and going up there um, and uh, doing the whole show this weekend. It'll be fun. I'll be in the land of Dahmer, which is always interesting. And uh, I'm sure that I'll take some video up there. So I will see you guys soon. Have a great week. Uh, thanks for joining me. The number you have dialed is not available at present. Please leave your message after the beep. Yeah, trendsetter. Whoa. This is Psycho Chopper. Don't worry about it. Just follow me. Because we need a little controversy. Because I'm so guilty without me. I said.